Okay. Well, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the very basics of differential equations and different characteristics or classes of differential equations. In this video, we're going to talk about the two different types of solutions to differential equations. And even though we haven't really learned any like techniques on solving differential equations, we're still going to talk about properties of these solutions. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a look at two of the most very simple examples. So let's get started. Let's kick off with the very basic example of a first order differential equation. The derivative of y with respect to x is equal to f of x. Now the actual value of f of x doesn't really matter so much for this example. Just think of it as a general function. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to try and figure out the function of y with respect to x, that satisfies this. So, your calculus should be kicking in. We just need to integrate both sides in order to find y as a function of x. So, let's just integrate the left side with respect to x and integrate the right side with respect to x. Now, notice we have two indefinite integrals. The main reason is we're just taking the antiderivative of both terms. We don't really have any limits of integration. So because we have indefinite integrals, we're going to be left over with some constants of integration. So we can say that the left-hand side, that's just going to be y plus the first constant of integration. And the right-hand side, we can just keep as the integral of f of x dx. But we have to include the second constant of integration from this indefinite integral. Now, we can simplify this up. We can subtract c1 on both sides, just basically grouping our constants together. And we get y is equal to the integral of f of x dx. Now I'm just going to do a substitution. We're going to define c as just c2 minus c1, in which case we're just left with the integral of f of x dx plus c. Now, the reason I did this is a lot of like mathematicians and physicists and whatnot, they like to group these constants of integration together into just one value. The reason being is they say, okay, if C2 is just a constant that just has one value, and C1 is just a constant that just has one value, then C2 minus C1 is just a constant that just has one value. So it's just easier dealing with one constant rather than having two floating around. But regardless, we're still left with one arbitrary constant, c. So we started off with a first order differential equation, and we have a result that has one arbitrary constant. Now let's take a look in, at our second example. Here we're going to take a look at a very basic second order differential equation we're going to uh, say that the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to g of x. We're, like before, g of x is just a general function. Now, in order to solve this differential equation, we're going to have to integrate twice in order to find out what y is as a function of x. So let's just integrate out the first time. Take the integral on the left and right hand side and we're going to say that the integral of the second derivative of y is just going to be dy dx and that's going to be equal to, we're just going to leave it as the integral of g of x dx but we have to include that constant of integration so we're just going to say plus c. So now we're still left with the first derivative, so let's integrate again, and let's integrate the left side, and integrate all of the right side. We're going to have to integrate both terms. So we're going to get that the integral of the left side, that's just y, and now we integrate term by term, so the integral of this general term is just a, we can just leave it as a double integral, the integral of g of x dx dx. But now we have the integral of a constant. And we know how to integrate a constant with respect to x. It's just going to be c times x. 
Now, because we did a uh, second, like, indefinite integral, we're going to get a second constant of integration. I'm just going to write that as C2, and just to distinguish it, I'm just going to change this first one to C1. So now we have a solution, a general uh, solution that has two arbitrary constants. And if you notice, we started off with a second order differential equation. Whoops. Second, oh, that's really ugly. Second order. So a first order differential equation has one arbitrary constant in the solution. A second order differential equation has two arbitrary constants, because in this case we integrated twice. So you may be guessing what's coming up next. We can say, I'm just going to rewrite it down here, that in general, for an nth order linear differential equation, we're going to get a solution that has n arbitrary constants, n constants. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that there are many different techniques for solving differential equations. In this set, we just did in we just integrated, and we found that our arbitrary constants were our constants from integration. But there are going to be other techniques to solve differential equations that in some cases will not involve integration. But even for those cases where we solve it with those different techniques, we're still going to have these arbitrary constants. So you may be saying, where do these constants come from if they don't come from integration? Well, they come from one property that stems from the linearity of the differential equation. But we'll get to that in another video. For now, let's take a look at another uh, idea. You may be thinking, okay, well, what do we exactly do we do with these constants? We don't really know what they are. Well, there is a way to figure out what uh, their actual value. In order to find out the value of like n of these arbitrary constants, we're going to need additional information from n initial conditions, or ICs for short. These are basically n different equations that help us solve like what the actual values of these constants are. And just to really illustrate what I mean by that, let's do out an example. This will be an example of what they like to call an initial value problem. Now, let's do a nice physical example. Let's say that we're on a cliff that's about five meters up. And we have a ball initially at exactly five meters, and we're just going to toss it up in the air with an initial velocity of like two meters per second. And we know that the ball is just going to go up and then drop. So we know that the because it's just falling down, we know what the acceleration of the ball is going to be. From physics, we know, well, if we define this as our x-axis, we can say that the acceleration, or the second derivative of x with respect to time, is equal to the acceleration due to gravity, which is just a constant, negative g. We just got that from physics. But we also know two additional bits of information. We know that at the very beginning, before we toss it up in the air, we can say at time t is equal to zero. I'm just, uh, we know that x at zero is equal to five meters, and we know that the velocity at time t equals zero is equal to two meters per second. So now what we do is we're going to solve this differential equation and plug in our initial conditions. So we did basically this uh, more or less the same thing as this differential equation in the last example. So I'm just going to do it out really quickly. If we integrate both sides once, we're going to get that dx dt is equal to the integral of the right-hand side with respect to time, which is just minus g times t plus our first constant of integration. Now we're going to integrate both sides again, and we're going to get that x is equal 
2. The integral of the right hand side, which is just negative 1 half gt squared, plus the integral of c1, which is c1 times time, plus our second constant of integration, c2. More or less the exact same thing we found up here, it's just instead of g of x, we just have a constant g. So now we have like the same solution with the same two uh, arbitrary constants. Now we can actually apply those initial conditions from before. So we can plug in what happens at time t is equal to zero to solve for the value of c1 and c2. If we plug in t is equal to zero for the equation for x, we're going to get that x at zero is equal to negative one half g times zero squared plus c1 times zero plus c2. And we know from our initial condition that all of this is equal to five meters. But we know that this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, so we're just left with c2 is equal to five. Now we can plug in our second differential our uh, sorry our second initial condition, which is the velocity at time t is equal to zero. Well, the velocity is just the derivative of x, so we can say v of t is equal to dx dt. So v at zero is equal to just this equation evaluated at zero, negative g times zero plus c one and all of that is equal to two meters per second. So we know that this is just zero and we're left with C1 is equal to two. So we can plug in the values of our arbitrary constants and we get that X is equal to negative one half GT squared plus two T plus five. And there we solved our original differential equation and we applied our initial conditions. Now let's just take a look at what we did. Here we have two different types of solutions. We have one solution up here that involves all the arbitrary constants. And we have another solution down here that doesn't have any arbitrary constants. So what we like to call these, both of these solutions have a particular, have a specific name. The solution that has like all the values of the constant solved for and has no more constants left is what we like to call the particular solution. The particular solution. And the solution that has all the constants left, all the for an nth order differential equation, it contains all n arbitrary constants. We call that the general solution. The general solution. Now it's important to realize that the general solution has the potential to describe every single particular solution. Because C1 and C2 can be any particular value. So let's just recap what we found. We found that in general, for an nth order linear differential equation, when we solve that, we're gonna get a general solution that's gonna contain n constants for an nth order differential equation. And if we have n initial conditions, we can pl plug those in and evaluate those constants and get what's called the particular solution. So those are the two solutions that, or the two types of solutions you'll see a lot in differential equations. And I just really want to introduce them as early as possible. So with that under belt, let's start learning about techniques to solve differential equations. And I'll see you in the next video.